Hi, my name is Eric Fisher, and I'm about to have a productive conversation with Mike Vardy. Welcome to A Productive Conversation. It's me, Mike Vardy, and I'm joined once again by Eric Fisher on this episode of the program. Eric is the host of Beyond the To-Do List, a very popular podcast in the productivity realm, and I'm really excited just to have him on the program again today just to talk about you know, productivity and just have a, a session where we have essentially what the crux of the show is all about, a productive conversation. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Eric Fisher. Enjoy. And I can't think of anyone who I would have a more productive conversation with than Eric Fisher. And I've just actually insulted the 480 plus people <laughs> on before, but that's okay. No, I mean, honestly, it's funny because literally as we're recording this, I had um, my first conversation on the podcast with uh, Tan Pham from Asian Efficiency, turned it into a two-parter because we got into things like generative AI. I'll link it in the show notes because that was an area that I didn't think we would go into. We went beyond the scope of what that conversation was going to be. And when I think about beyond, I can't help but think about Eric, because he's the host of Beyond the To-Do List. How long have you been hosting that podcast now for, Eric? August of 2012. So at the time people are listening to this, it will have been oh, oh, just over 11 years, wow. Wow. which is insane. How many episodes are you? will you be at then? The 11 years, so it'll be like 500? It'll be, it'll be past 500 by then, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and, almost and, there now. And I mean, this podcast has been running for nearly 500 episodes. But I mean, before that, like, it's it, you know, it's amazing the stick to that you've had with this podcast. And one of the things I want to get into right away, we're going to talk about the idea of going beyond in a lot of it, like beyond the mm -hmm. scope of, uh, you know, today, beyond the scope of, like, there's lots of things that I want to get into. But how have you managed to kind of keep it fresh for yourself for all of this time? Because that's a long time to do the same pod, essentially the same podcast. It is. And, and you and I have had different conversations, permutations of this conversation. I've had different conversations with others. And, and around the time the show was turning 10, it was like, oh gosh, huge milestone. I didn't really celebrate it that much because I was like, you know what? I don't want to, I'm not one to toot my own horn, mm -hmm. which can also sometimes be a detriment where you don't like push the show and market it as much as you probably should, but that's being rectified. But you think about it and you're like, I'm like, I look back over and actually even in the process of, you know, be, you know, um, behind, not behind baseball, what's the inside baseball? Yeah. That's the phrase uh, to be inside baseball. But with podcasting, when you and I were both doing like dynamic ad insertion conversion therapy <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, uh, as I was going back through the old episodes, I'm like, there, there have been definitely five or six different shows in this one show, like mm. versions of the show across, like there was the first one where it was like, I got started and did it for two years and it wasn't that consistent, but it was consistent enough and it grew and it grew and it grew. And then there was working remotely from home and how that affected and what the topics came up and all that kind of stuff. And then um, at least two to three more up to the point of that 10 year mark. And what I realized was it took kind of, growing into what I kind of vision casted, if that's a word or it's a phrase, it is now mm -hmm. uh, TM, but uh, it, it came down to, okay, we're taking the pulse. Where are we at? What are we interested in? And then moving forward and kind of blocking and batching and moving forward. And the consistency hit, I mean, the, the every single week, no matter what, without fail happened at about four years in. Right. Maybe five. From that point forward, it was every single week, and the no matter what. And the cadence has been, interestingly, the same. And I mean, we, that's the thing. I think it's funny, as we are recording this, it's before podcast movement. But we'll be, you know, the plan is to be a podcast movement. That's the yes. plan in Denver. And so the fact that there are so many people that ask me this question, I'm sure you get this too. Uh, how do I make money at podcasting? How do I earn a living doing it? And the answer is, like with anything else, it's you've got to put in the work, put in the time, put in the, you know, it's not like we, day one, we had all these ads and stuff like we didn't. And, and it's fluctuating too. It's not the, yeah. the, it's not a, there's no such thing as permanence when it comes to anything really. 
No, no. And that's the thing is like, even back, like as we were closing out last year, I felt like, Ooh, the permanence is kind of not there again. And then as the year of 2023 started back up again, it was like, Ooh, influx, lots of feeling of confidence and consistency and permanence and, and all of that. And now I'm back at like, as we record this and whatever it is, we recorded this. Mm-hmm. We, it, it's kind of like, you know, we were chatting pre-chat or pre-record. It was like, eh, you know, things feel a little off again. Like, what are we going to do? How are we both kind of taking that? And that's, that's just how it goes. It's, you can't just consistently ride the same wave. You have to look for the next one and get on it. So this poses a very interesting thought process for me about season. We've talked about seasonal productivity before. I know we yes. have, whether I yeah. think it was on your show, um, the idea of seasons or eat maybe in the blab days with Dotto. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure we had an uh, dude having to go back and revisit those episodes yeah. to put. Uh, and I, I, so I'm still making money off you and Steve. So <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> but it, it, it's so I, I think about the title beyond the to-do list and I think about what it means now versus when you started. Has it changed for you? What's funny is, is I think it started off as one thing and it it really just came out of, oh, I'm going to have a productivity show, but I want to be able to go beyond the normal trappings of the phrases of time management and efficiency and email and calendars and, and just, you, you know, the standard Stephen Covey type stuff back then. Right. We've come a long way since then, but in a weird way, I think it's now come back all the way around to where it is like basically, hey, put the word in the middle of a page and draw spokes off of it and any direction I want to go in, as long as I can loop it back around to collectively what we've been gathering this whole time momentum wise or momentum kind of gives a because sometimes here's the thing, you lose your momentum yeah, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. There's probably a better way to put it, probably something along the lines of collective experience right. along the way through mm-hmm. the journey. Mm-hmm. And, and again, journey is also a very wrought word these days. And so is storytelling. So let's avoid all those and just <laughs> draw the line right now, <laughs> Mike. Um, but that's what it is. It, it's collectively like I still come back around. I mean, even just having done like, I don't know, an episode on meditation this past year at some point. I know I did. We've revisited like it's funny because now it's we're revisiting topics and it's like revisiting the topic or the or with a, a previous guest. What's a fresh take? What's a new perspective? What's, you know, what's a new way of looking at things and tying it back to old ways or just saying, forget the old ways. Let's start over. Let's do new stuff. We're, right. You know, in other words, keeping again, like I said earlier, keeping your hand on the pulse and kind of saying, OK, well, this is where one, this is where I'm going or this is where I see people going right now. Like, again, I could do an episode on AI every single week and it would change. And I'm not going to do that. Same as like, I didn't want to talk about remote work every single week when the pandemic hit. Or apps or anything like that. Um, Exactly. I want to, I want to get into this idea of, of, you know, productivity. We've talked about this before. Uh, Again, I think privately more than publicly. Maybe we've talked about it publicly. Again, again, these conversations come back and we, we were so steeped in the space, but when when you asked me what what I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about beyond, not just in the sense of the to-do list, but beyond like today. It's interesting. I, I was talking to my wife about this. I think, yes, actually it was yesterday. We were talking about, um, I think it was Father's Day. And I was mentioning something about yeah, it's it's the it's the 18th of June or whatever because we're recording yeah. this in June. Yeah, it's coming. Goes, up soon. Yeah, that's too far away. I'm like, but is it? <laughs> like, is it? And I wonder, as I've spent a lot of time and you have studying this stuff, is the definition of beyond in terms of time is relative to the person's attitude towards it, and maybe not just that, but the level of intensity that they have on a daily basis around maybe the things that they need to do that are on their to-do list. I'd love to hear not only like your experience, your thoughts on that, but also maybe what you think, what your insights are on that. Maybe, you know, yeah. like, cause I, cause beyond to me is like, I don't want to go too far down the road. I don't want to like, because things can change. We've seen that happen. I mean, we had two and a half years where, 
it was like the blip from, you know, Avengers Endgame, right? Where it's like, you know, where'd that time go? But then also, if we're not thinking quite far enough ahead, then we may be trying to do too much in a day. And furthermore, maybe we should be looking back and seeing what did we do that maybe led us here and also what and you know how we got here and whether or not that's the place we want to be in the first place. So there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. And so what you just said, I think I had three different things spring to mind. So one is, let me, let me kind of name them here so I can, so we can connect the dots. Sure. Number one is college prof, what his phrase was that kind of turned me on my head. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one is a, a recent conversation I had with a friend about we were looking back, college friend, looking back on, you know, high school days slash college days and, you know, what we were reminiscing about there. That's another one. And then I think, I think that's just two. I think there's probably more, but I lost it. But anyway, the college prof was an evening class and he said, he gave me a phrase, he gave the class a phrase, really. He said, you know, I've always lived my life by this motto, wherever you are, be there. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, I get it. But I've, kept it and I've kept it and I've turned it around like a coin or a something like a trinket in my hand. And it's like, it means more than just be present, right? Yeah. That's short selling it because, and I remembered the second part because it's not just about, okay, if I'm here where I'm at, being present means acknowledging my physical location and kind of matching that up with my psychological or emotional state. Who's with me? What's important right now, in other words, current level triage, but also then the word triage makes me, we often talk about triage in terms of, ooh, triaging your email. That's at least how us air quotes productivity people think about it. But you go back to the medical kind of thing where it's like you triage soldiers in war. It's not that urgent. It's not life or death in that sense, our productivity practices. It's not. And also triage is a step in the process. It's not where it ends. Exactly. Uh, If it ends there then that's a problem, right? Like if but you're triaging a, in a hospital, you're like, okay, you're going over to the heart area. You're going to this. Like the idea is to get them to a place where they can then go to the place where they're going to get the higher quality level of treatment. If you don't make it there, then there's a reason, right? And I yes. think the same thing, ha- that's where things go. Like no pun, I mean, stating it plainly, triage is where things can either move on to live a, a, another day or where they go to die. Yes. It's so it's, it's about, in other words, but for me, you know, re- reduce the level of anxiety slash urgency, at least over time through practice of triage in the appropriate way. Mm-hmm. And there's the key, the word appropriate. So that makes me think of David Allen's horizons yep. where it's like, okay, how high up am I lifted up in terms of my, how far out I can see and how can, how consistent slash how appropriate that vision is at that time. If I'm always stuck at the highest level, I'm getting nothing done down here. But if I'm I'm in mid level, you know, again, that can be helpful, but it's like, okay, lift me up so I can see stuff so I can come back down. It's, it's, it's an up and down thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and as you're talking about this, I'm thinking about, and we've talked about this before, quantitative and qualitative productivity. Like that's, and it's such a weird, we're in such a weird space with that right now, because again, that blip that we had kind of slowed quantity down. And I think it, it it at least shone a spotlight on quality. May not have elevated it, but it certainly shone a spotlight on it. And now that things are, quote, speeding up again and access more than anything else, not necessarily like, let's do more, do more, do more, but like, oh, we have the capability of doing that, but should we? And it, it to me, I was thinking about um, the concept of uh, my daughter, she graduated high school this year. And uh, the last concert that they did for choir, they were giving out choir awards and they were giving out points for, for, for awards. So you accumulated points to get to a certain level of, and they're called, they call it like the dynamic awards. And the idea is the amount of points you get would get you to a certain level. So if you committed more then you would get a higher level and when, but it didn't necessarily mean you committed more um, effort or quality, you just showed up or committed to more things. So I'm looking at that and going, that is an extension of, of <laughs> it's, it's a recipe for burnout and not only burnout, but 
I know, and I talk to my daughter about this, and this is not slam. I mean, I get the person who runs the music program is very passionate about music, but not everybody is as passionate about that. Number one, number two, it, it can actually harm your love of whatever it is that you're doing. And we probably ran across this. I don't know if you did. I know I did. Like reading books you don't want to read in school can seriously kill your love of reading, right? Yes. Further to that, I get a lot of people, Mike Schmitz and I talk about this. Him and I actually had a conversation about this not too long ago. Um, I love reading nonfiction. I don't read a lot of fiction, but I will. Um, people are like, oh, you should read more fiction or you should read more fiction. And I'm at the point, maybe, and I, I, we're both getting there, where it's like, screw it. I don't have to do that. If I don't want to, I enjoy reading nonfiction because that's what I love to learn. And it's, it's the, the idea of this music program. Like my daughter used to love going to sing in choir and stuff like that. And by the end of her high school career, she did not enjoy it nearly as much. Now, I don't think that was the aim of the program. Clearly it wasn't, but their goals and how they reached those goals, how they measured them, is what seriously affected the output and the yeah. outcome. And we're in this weird space right now, I think, where quality is really, it, there is this battle that quantity had a leg up on quality for a long, long time. But now people are going, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And it's the pushback is very apparent. I don't know if you're, I mean, I'm seeing, I'm sure you are too, but like, I'd I love to hear so. your thoughts on that. And I think, and I've got two, one quick story where as it comes to, okay, my daughter also graduated and my son and I leaving the graduation, he turns to me because we were drove separately mm -hmm. and he says, we don't have to go to any more of her choir or band <laughs> concerts. And I said, I didn't turn to him, but I, I slowly raised my hand up for a high five. And I said, dude, that is awesome. And it's yes. not that I didn't like going, right? it's that it, it, the, the the quantity wore me and my wife and my son out as well. Not just the, was it was it the quantity of the amount of these concerts on their own, or was it a combined? Because it happened to us too. The quantity of the amount and the length of time each concert Both. was. Yeah. See. Both. Same. Same. You know, you're going to be committed to an hour and a half. To, to And you don't even know. You go into this nebulous, vague time that you do not know how long you're going to be there. And then it's happening every other week with and because she was in band and in choir. So it was like so three. So crazy. the last concert, which is not un, unlike the normal concerts, two to three hours. This one was three hours long that we just went to now. Yeah, we were lucky. Ours now, were shorter at the end. Now, speaking of this is going back to what you talked about earlier about the idea of presence, right? And I agree that the term presence is another one that's super overused. Like, be present, be here now, is, like all that. It is, yes. But I found, and a friend of mine, Ernie, said this to me not too long ago. The quote, I actually have it on my phone. It's by, and I'm going to screw up the pronunciation of the, of the person again, that, is, uh, that says it. It's, the quote is called, I don't mind what happens. That's the name of the quote. Um, and it's, it's a combination, because not only is it like, I don't mind what happens, but also I don't give much... Uh, I don't let what happens affect me nearly as much. So not like I don't care. So it's like the mind aspect of it. And I'm sitting in this concert and I can tell you that my wife was n less than thrilled about being there, but she had just <laughs> finished work too. So there's again, environmental stuff. She had to bust yes. there, all that stuff. I was there and I'm thinking I have two ways that I can approach this. Number one, I can be miserable and upset because it's another three hour concert. And Oh my God, the, the way that they're organizing the staging and all that stuff. And I've done stage stuff. I'm like, this could be at least an hour shorter if they were doing it a oh, bit totally. more. The, there's all there's that, an oh, aesthetic and oh, UI it, part to it for it, sure dude, for me as well. I've done stagecraft. Like I, I performed, like I've run shows, but I thought I could go that way or I could go, I can lean in. Cause it's only, it's only, I don't know how long it's going to be, but I have the program in front of me now. So I have a sense but I can lean in. And if I lean in, will the experience be better? And it was, it was better. And I could hear people come like, there are moments where I'm like, you know, in and out. Like, again, there's no, nothing is ever like, again, permanent, like the state of me being, I'm going to lean in and enjoy this. I'm like, Ooh, I'm not enjoying this one so much, but 
that improved my overall experience. You don't mm -hmm. get to do that when things are happening so fast, so quickly, at a breakneck speed all the time, not just in terms of pacing, but in terms of just sheer volume. And that's what I think when you started Beyond the To-Do List, when I started my productivity journey, it was like, we got to we gotta find a way to deal with all the things. And then I think yes. we kind of found things that would help us deal with all the things. And I think now we're at a point where we're like, why are we doing all the things? Why are we doing all the things is the question we didn't ask. Yes. No, but I think we, I think that two and a half to three year blip, honestly, led people to ask that a lot more. I mean, even today, and I know you didn't see this yet as we're recording this, this is the day. So you're going to definitely know when we record this episode, uh, WWDC, which is Apple's annual event for developers. They did a keynote. They announced the vision pro, but I'm not even going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about like the wellness factor, the journaling app that they announced. All that stuff is aligned with this idea of, you know, do I need to, like, where, how am I? Do I need to do all this stuff? Am I going in the right direction? Questions that you can't possibly give enough thought if you're always doing productive, which goes back to the, the stuff I've talked about. And so this goes to the beyond the to-do list aspect, right? Like, yes, the to-do list is, is merely a tool and beyond gives you a lot of, for using your term, there's a lot of nebulous and ambiguity going on there, but your job, and you've talked about this, is to kind of give people some ideas of what they could do with that. Yeah, reach into the nebula, the nebulae, if you will, and pull something of worthwhile out and, you know, and, or pull it out, look it at, you know, again, turn it around in your hand with, with the audience, with a guest and come up with something worthwhile out of it. The third thing that I was going to mm -hmm. say that kind yeah. of ties in here was my chat with my friend and we were kind of going back and forth. He's, he's got a daughter who's graduating college now. So he's, his daughter's three, four years older than mine. Right. And mine was graduating high school. And I just kept thinking about like, we were talking about time and the passage of it and the perception of it and all of that. And we're like, and I kept thinking, you know, I daydream a lot. I, I, or I try not to, but sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it takes the form of worry. Sometimes it just takes the form of, man, you know, if I had time travel, because we, you know, like you, I'm huge into time travel. Yep. I love it. Just love it. And the thing is, is that it, it you know, the, the daydreaming of, you know, if I could have gone back to a specific point in time in my past, and then from that point pivoted things forward. And I'm like, I say to him, you know, it's not even about making changes so much as it is being able to maybe re-experience or uh, what not salivate, savor yeah. close, close in words, but yeah, uh, savor it better. And it's like, well, there's not, you, you can't go back and literally visually see it again, even though you're looking at visual representations, pictures, video, et cetera. You can write it down. You can, you can journal about the past. You can you know, you can, whatever you can recollect, you can do all these different tools and such to get a better understanding on not just the past, but your own past. Mm -hmm. And you can, and, and the goal here isn't to, um, you know, undo the mistakes of the past so much as learn from that past experience and even revisit it, relearn it, dig it deeper, et cetera. Sit with and it. And make better, say, sit with it even. Re ruminate is mm -hmm. probably the best word here. And then use that as a forward course of action. Maybe not in a hustle culture way of, all right, let's grind now. But in a, no, I've got a more zen-like or paced approach. And, an, and more of an answer to which of the things I want to do and why based on what I've already sunk cost fallacied in my past. Yeah. And I don't think people, it's uncomfortable to do that. I think it's, it's uncomfortable. It's, it's horrible. Uncomfortable, it feels like think, homework. Yeah. Well, it's uncomfortable, I think, to pause and stop because the expectation is if we do it, like the, the expectation is inertia is death, right? Stagnation is like, well, you got to be doing something, but I mean, I think as you get older, this is my, again, 
I mean, I'm I'm going to be 49 this year. Actually, as of this recording, I will be as of this episode, I will be 49. So I'm getting to that like 50 year mark where mortality thoughts creep in. You know, mm-hmm. your age is determined again. I mean, your daughter graduated high school. Mine did. My son's going on. He's going to be a teenager this year. Like, there's no going back. So while a reflective practice, and you know I value one. Like, I value it, journaling, all that stuff. I was very delighted to see that Apple's incorporating. I, I'm curious to see how they do it so it doesn't just become something that's a check off, like a checkbox that you check off. That's yeah. my concern. But anything that removes friction to a point is good. I think that obviously technology can overcorrect. We're seeing that with artificial intelligence and things like that, where we go too far in any direction. Humans mm-hmm. love to do that anyway. They, the center is never sexy, right? It's always either one way or the other, right? And I think the older that I'm getting, I'm like, okay, mortality is sinking in. Like the idea that I'm not going to be here forever. Um, it's not that I ruminate on it. <laughs> so I go, okay, well, what am I going to do before I die? Memento more, all that stuff, which I think is valuable. But it's interesting that it that as you get older, you start to get better at figuring out what really matters. And it's that the, I mean, I was watching the, the I'm watching Ted Lasso again with my son. And there's this quote that like, you know, that it's not from Ted Lasso, but he's like, youth is wasted on, on youth. Right. <laughs> like it, cause, yes. cause we don't like, I'm see, and you're going to see it in your kid. I'm going to see it in mine where I'm yeah. like, man, if I was their age, knowing what I know now, Oh my right. goodness. Right. But you also, but we're also wise enough to know that we can't number one, at least, and again, I don't, I'm not saying everybody's like this, that we can't go and we should maybe shouldn't go. Okay. Well, if I was you knowing what I know now, this is what I would do. I have to let my daughter experience that. I have to let my son experience that stuff. Yeah. All I can do, which is great is be there is just be there and it doesn't have to be like checking in and leaning in and saying, hey, how you doing? It's just sitting, having a meal or going for like yesterday, my son asked me, quote, um, can we go? Can you go with me? You want to go with me for a walk to pick up some things that I can use for trees in my Dungeons and Dragons thing that I'm building. Now, there's two answers I could give there. Sure or no. And I'm like, if I go, he's going to love it. I'm going to love it. And. I may not love it as I'm sitting with it right now because do I really want to go for a walk? But I'm not going to get this moment back. And I don't know how many more I have. So what's more valuable than that right now? And Will Arnett in the latest, uh, I know they have that series right now, The Smartless Guys, Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Sean Hayes. I've become a huge fan of that show, even though I didn't listen for the first two and a half years now. Have you watched the documentary yet? I finished the whole thing yesterday. So, so you saw the discussion about parenthood, loved it that parenthood discussion. Loved it. Yes, Will Arnett that was, coming to that realization. I'm like, holy that was the highlight. Shit. Yeah, that was the me, highlight for me. I, goosebumps. I'm like, holy yeah. shit! Like, you know, that's exactly. And here's the thing. I don't know. I know he wants to be happy. That's what he says. And we'll, we'll link to. I think there's videos that we can link to in the show notes for sure. Yeah. But, but I'm almost more. I want to be content. I want to be, I want to stay, like, I know happiness is one side of that and sadness. You can't be happy without being sad. Like there, you know, that's the, the yeah, but it, contentedness it, is, is that's what that is. I think when he, when he explained that, that's contentedness. It's like that, that is so centered. It's so balanced. And the thing is, like we said, there's no such thing. There's no permanence. Balance is never permanent. There's always like movement. It's like, you know, same thing with, with contentment. Like there's levels of it, right? The horizons of focus are a very discrete form of balancing that David Allen talks about. And when I chatted with David Allen at the running remote conference, we had that fireside chat. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. Um, His answers were very like, you know, I think you guys are making too much of this thing. I think it like there, that's kind of, and he's like the old 78 year old guy that they're looking at him at. And he's, I mean, he has, I mean, he's loving life. You could totally tell. And he's not, I'm not saying he's old, but he's 70 year old. And there's people in the crowd going, Oh, okay, sure. You know, you don't get me. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like nothing has really changed other than maybe some of the tools. But, you know, I think we tend to make things more than they need to be in, in this quest for, 
getting it all done or yeah. being uber productive where sometimes the most productive thing you can do is go for a walk with your kid and pick up things that you can turn into a tree for his Dungeons and Dragons display. Well, that's what I was going to say was the question there is in that posing of the question from your son to you is, and, and should we even be asking this question? Honestly, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Should we even be, because I've, he I've heard people, anyway, I've, I've listened to another show, the film cast, I love it, mm -hmm. uh, have for a long time. And one of the things they did in their After Dark was they were talking about, they had a, a listener question where the person said, <laughs> the person said, so you editorialize and critique and review Con, you know, air quotes, content for your show. Mm -hmm. How do you go about keeping it fresh or enjoy, what do you do to enjoy it, even though it's air quotes, your job? And one of them just conceded, I mean, at this point, that's kind of out the window. And I'm like, yeah, but I liken that to the question I was about to say, which is your son asks you for the walk for a specific reason. And you have to ask yourself, or do you, is this productive? And the thing is, is I don't know if you have to ask that question or not, but I think what you can say is in a mixture of our different yet similar, you and me, Mike, mm -hmm. definitions of the word productive, heck yeah, it is. Sure. Of course it is. Yep. The, the answer is yes, because not going means you, you one last time didn't get to do, you know, eventually yeah. you'll not be doing those anymore. Yep. So you want to have as many of those now as you can. You, and that's because you yeah. don't know what's going to happen during that walk. And that's some of the stuff that happened during the walk. Exactly. Great the serendipity of things is huge. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's interesting to me that you bring like, I've talked about this before and I, and this is something that I know people have said, well, why would you need that? Like theming my months, I themed the month of December as relationships and I have a family day and they're like, well, why shouldn't you just know, shouldn't you just know to do that? I'm like, yeah, but I don't trust that the world will let me do it unless I give it space for it to happen because the world is asking for other things. And sometimes it's hard to ignore the world. And sometimes the world is bigger and sometimes the world is smaller. You know, this, the world could be in my, my, my home, right? The world could also be when, I'm at a conference. The world could be the world's like in just, your pocket at all times. Yeah, Sorry. It, it, well, no, for, no, but what I mean, uh, but the, the world is whatever I'm prioritizing yes. as. The, and that's the thing is someone would say, well, is that productive or is it a priority? I'm like, that's a, I think, is it a priority is a dangerous question because then you're starting to do math. That's the quantity. Then you start doing math. Like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> if I have this thing to do and this thing, whereas is this productive? It gives you a bit more of a, well, yeah, because it's related to, you know, and you could argue that, and there's lots of ways to argue this, this is where numbers come in. Well, it's only two o'clock and I should be working right now. Well, yeah, but it's not right. Like, and even if that argument is that everyone's going to have a different perspective of that, right? Everyone's going to have a different answer to that. But the thing is, is that this is where I get into the whole night owl stuff where it's like, time yeah. is like whatever, right? Like if, if I have nothing scheduled at two o'clock, then I can do it right? As long as I take care of the other stuff. And again, as long depends on what the other stuff is. Yeah. Well, I mean, even the fact that like we started talking and then recording at what, four my time and yeah, one yeah. your yep. time, yep. there's your, your two o'clock is not my two o'clock no. and none of it matters. <laughs> no. And I mean, <laughs> time is, sense. I mean, time is still uniquely a man-made construct. Yes. We have this nature tells us to, but the week totally entirely man-made like that's, you know, we need objective ways to arrange our lives, work and home, but how we do that is subjective. Right. And I think the hard part is when we do something subjectively, we open the door to criticism, to blowback, to um, we, there's a vulnerability there. Whereas something objective is less susceptible to that. And why I think, why, what I want to turn this into as we get close to wrapping up is when you do the same, when you do the podcast every week, at this point, it's be, there is an objective element to that. How you approach it is subjectively. So I wonder for you, because the podcast has always been like an extension of what I do. It's not the be all and end all, 
Mm -hmm. Um, Some people only know me from the podcast. Some people know me from my writing. Some people know me from my, all that stuff. Are you at a point where you're going to go beyond the podcast? Yeah, actually, it's, I mean, it's hilarious that that, I mean, it's literally what we're talking about in my mastermind this morning. Mm. First thing, it was the first thing I talked about this morning with anybody outside of my house. And so that's exactly right. I mean, there's, there's elements and components. And I mean, again, the podcast itself is the, is the, the kind of the, the engine, Yep. but there's, I, I need to now add a stereo and some seats and some other things to the car. You know, it, there's definitely, definitely uh, a beyond motion in, so in motion. <laughs> what does that, what, so how are you approaching that? I mean, you don't need to share what it is you're going to do, but I mean, it's, it is, you're stepping out and that, that is well, not, that's, that's uncharted waters for you to a degree, right? Yeah. So if, if I said I knew what I was going to do, I'd be lying. Right. Fair. I don't. It's completely fair. It is completely, you know, for me to say, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have an, there's like, there's a component with a newsletter. There's a component with a community. A lot of, some of the stuff that you've done, mm-hmm. you know, honestly, sure. and I've admired, um, you know, newsletter, community, um, thinking about jumping in also with, um, and, and com- by community, I don't just mean like um, fans of the show and like, Mm-hmm. giving access, but also giving like additional content. And I'm not just talking audio. I'm right. talking other things, I'm talking micro courses. I'm talking, um, you know, again, there's a lot. I mean, I mean, I've, if, if I, if I told you that I had sat down and like listed all these things out in the past, um, that'd be true. But again, doing all the things is a trap. Yes. So it's which things are the best things and Honestly, you know, treat it like Venn diagrams since I can't have a podcast without mentioning Venn diagrams. It's what's the best thing and what's the most exciting thing or enjoyable thing and what's that center look like right, as I right, hit right, my right. microphone here. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the other thing is, frankly, how, how what's going to bring in revenue too still? Like you can't Well, that's forget the third that. component. Yeah. But it's, it's that, and that kind of wraps up in best for me mm-hmm. in a way. Um but I think moreover in best, I'm looking at biggest lift for least uh, effort, lever and fulcrum type right. thing. And you had Seth Godin on the show not too long ago. I'll link to that yeah. episode in the show notes. I mean, Seth was one of the people that said, like, do what you love and the money will come. Like, I mean, I'm, you've been doing podcasting for a while. You've, the nice yeah. thing is once you've been doing something in one arena for a while and you jump into some other area – You've got people that are going, oh, I wonder. I wonder what that is, right? Like me, if I was going to do more YouTube, they'd be like, oh, what's Mike going to do with YouTube, right? But the key is can you, they, there's a level of expectation that you've already set up. So then mm-hmm. you have to really manage those expectations for whatever the next thing or couple of things that you're going to add to the mix, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and what's funny is to say going beyond the podcast includes – adding an additional podcast at some point that is not about productivity. Mm. Right. Like that's interesting right there. Like I, I'm not, I mean, I mean, you're more than all about productivity. I'm not just my, if, if you prick my to-do list, does it not bleed? (laughs) Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, Anyway, hemorrhages. what are we talking about? (laughs) Gushes. (laughs) Anyway, no, I've got an idea. Like a friend of mine and I, who happens to be also my podcast producer and editor, mm-hmm. we've had an idea that we've been kicking around for a long time, kind of back burnering it. And it's like, you know, it's got, it's for, for the, yeah, uh, this is a season. And then we do another season. And is that possible with this idea that we've got? And it, it definitely is. It's just gotta, you know, it's gotta take the right shape and form and creation is messy these days. It always was, but it's like even more so now the dynamics of that are, are interesting. So. Well, this anyway. has been great. I'm glad we had you back on the show because it's been a while. In fact, it's been so long that you've it's never had to do time. the introduction that you exactly. did to start things off. So you did it back when it was the productivity is podcast. And now there, you know, where it's a productive conversation, who knows what my podcasting journey will evolve into as well. So um, not to mention it's just a content creation journey. And, and I mean, that's the great thing is that there is no, um, it's, I mean, we use the term journey a few times. There's no, um, you know, the, the, the pathless path as Paul Miller talks about in his book and stuff like that. There's no one, there's no one way and there's no like, yes, this is where the end point is. I think that that, that, uh, in and of itself can be 
boring and unexciting. I think it's nice yeah. to be able to explore things. And I mean, we've both been in the game long enough that we have a bit of um, leverage to be able to do that. So that's kind of yeah. nice. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Where can people keep up with you, Eric, and, and the work that you're doing? Yeah, I mean, primarily, go. I mean, just go over to the show at beyondthetodolist.com. That's where you can send me a message or, in, you know, pick and choose some of the featured episodes that are there to check out. And, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Eric, thanks once again for having a productive conversation with me. Thanks for having me, Mike. Big thanks to Eric for joining me on the program today. You can check out all of the relevant links, helpful show notes, everything at productivityist.com slash podcast 495. We're creeping ever closer to that 500th episode, uh, which is a milestone. And I'm really excited for that. I'm also really excited to share with you the sponsors that we heard on today's episode. So during the conversation, if you want to support the show, that's one way to do it. Just go to productivityist.com slash podcast sponsors, check out what they have to offer, and that way they know that we sent you. And finally, another way to support the show is, of course, to subscribe to the podcast. That way you don't miss a single episode. You can go through the archives quickly and easily. Just hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening to the show, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you're listening to this program. Uh, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and that that way we can grow this show even as we approach that 500th episode that's it for this episode thanks again to eric for joining me thanks to you for listening until next time i'm mike vardy the host of a productive conversation reminding you to stop doing productive and start being productive see you later <laughs>